Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, just very quick, I want to show you how you can make such a bottom navigation view with such a fab in the middle of it. Um, because many have asked me that, this is my social media app I'm currently working on. You can see that it's just a completely normal working bottom navigation view here. We have profile, settings, search, home fragment. Um, this is not the purpose of this video that we make this app. It's just about this bottom navigation part here that you have this floating action button in the middle of it. And this is not the bottom navigation view alone. This is a bottom navigation view in combination with a bottom app bar. So a bottom app bar is just a view that comes from the material design library in Android. And that is used to um, be able to com uh, combine that with this floating action button. But this usually, um, if you have a bottom app bar, this um, doesn't look like a bottom navigation view with these items arranged in that order. It just puts all the items on the right side or on the left side, but not like this here. But in this video, I'll show you how we can achieve that. This video is sponsored by myself. If you want to take your learning to the next level, then click the first link in this video's description to get to my website, where you will find over 300 quiz questions for all my videos, take notes, climb the leaderboard and compete with other Android developers just by creating a free account. So I just created a very plain Android Studio project here with an empty activity and here we will do that. So just create that empty project and you're ready to go. Um, first of all, we want to add the material design dependency in our build.gradle file so that we can just use that bottom navigation view and bottom app bar view I talked about. So open your build.gradle module app file here on the left and then scroll down to dependencies here. I'll make a little space. Here we want to add this link and you will also find this link in this video's description and you will also find the source code to this project in this video's description. So then we need to tell Gradle that we want to sync this dependency with our project. So on the top right corner we have a little sync now link. We can click on that and Gradle will do its job. And once this is finished, we want to import some icons for our bottom navigation view. We want to do that in our RAS folder and right click on drawable, go to new, and we want to import a vector asset. So then this dialog will open up and we can, you can see we have a clip art here and we can select an icon here if we click on that. And there are a bunch of icons you can choose from here. And you can also decide if you want these icons to be filled, if you want these to be outlined, if you want these to be round and so on and so forth. You can really try around with that. I will just import five different icons here. So four for the bottom navigation view and one for the floating action button. So first of all, I will search for home. I will use this house icon here. Press OK. We can give it a name of IC underscore home. You can choose a color here. I'll just leave it black and I click on next and then on finish. Then we can do the same again. Right click on drawable, vector asset. This time this will be the icon for the search icon. So um, not icon, just search. This year, click OK. Rename this to IC search. And next and finish. Then again, right click drawable, new vector asset this time for the plus or I think add. Yes, this add icon here for the floating action button. Press OK, rename it to IC add and next and finish. And two more times, right click drawable, new vector asset. This time it's for the person. So we search for person, click on this, OK. Rename this to IC person next and finish and finally one last time for the settings so click on clip art again search for settings and this icon i want to choose here of course you can choose your very own icons here press ok rename this to ic settings and next and finish okay so the next thing we want to do here is we want to create a menu for our bottom navigation view because to tell it how these items, how the single options in it are arranged and which icons these have, we need to create a menu file also in our RAS folder here. So we cl right click on RAS, new Android resource file and make sure to select 
um, menu as a resource type here. So then it will automatically create that folder for you. And we will call that bottom underscore nav underscore menu. And then we can press enter to create that menu file. And you can see we get a little visual representation here. But we want to click on this code in the top right corner to get to the XML view of that menu. So in here in this XML file, we can now create the single items we want to have in that menu. So we open a new tag with item, we give it an ID, let's say MI home, we want to give it a title of home. And we want to give it an icon of IC home. So the home icon we chose, and then we can close that off. So that's it for the home icon in our menu. Then we can copy this and paste it three more times for our other menu items. The second one I will call MI search. I'll change the title to search as well. And the icon to IC search. Then the third item will be MI, um, let's say profile, name this profile. And this will be IC Oh, here's a quotation mark missing. This will be IC person. And finally, for the settings, we will have MI settings. The title will be settings. And the icon will be IC settings as well. Okay, that's it for our menu file. Next, we want to go into our activity main XML file to actually add that bottom navigation view and that bottom app bar I talked about to our design. So if this light editor opens for you, we don't want this, we want to see the XML view of this. So we click on code in the top right corner again to see the XML code of that. You can see Android Studio already created this text view here for us, we don't want that we can simply remove it. And we also don't want this layout to be a constraint layout. Instead, we want this to be a coordinated layout. A coordinated layout is very useful if you have a floating action button, for example, as in our case. So with it, we can just define that this floating action button should actually stick to our bottom app bar or bottom navigation view. So we will just replace this with a coordinator layout here. And then it should automatically also rename this closing tag here for you. Okay, in here, as I said, we first want to create our bottom app bar. So we open a new tag with a bottom app bar, this one here, press enter, we give it a layout width of match parent and layout height of rep content. And I'll also give it an ID of bottom app bar. And then we can set the layout gravity of this bottom app bar to bottom so that it just sticks to the bottom of this coordinator layout here. And then we can close this tag off for now. What I also want to create is the floating action button so that we can attach it to this bottom app bar. So we open a new tag floating action button. Um, the first one here, not the extended one. And this will have a layout width of rep content height of rep content as well. We give it an ID of just fab. And then now we want to set the icon of this floating action button. So SRC to IC plus or IC add. Yes, this one, we want to set its layout anchor. So that is basically to determine to which view this floating action button should stick to because we're inside of a coordinator layout here that is um, useful. So we will use our bottom app buff for that so that it just sticks to it. And then we can close this tag off. And if we now take a look in our design tab here in the top right corner, then you will see this doesn't look as we want it. And the reason for that is that we don't use a material theme yet. We reduce material components here, but not a theme. And to change that, we need to go into our values folder here into styles.xml. And here you can see this is the place where we can choose the, the theme for our app. And we want to use theme dot material components. And if we now take a look back in our activity main XML, you can see that looks kind of as we want it here. So if we zoom in, we have our floating action button attached to this bottom app bar. And the cool thing now is that we have some options to change 
how this circle here looks like. So if we go back to our code tab, to our bottom app bar, we could, for example, set the fab cradle margin to some amount of DP here. So for example, to 20 DP. If we now take a look back in the design tab, you will see that the margin or the, the circle is much bigger now. So just feel free to play around with these values. We also have some other values here, like if we just type cradle, the cradle vertical offset, for example, to 10 DP. This will just move the fab 10 DP to the top and this circle as well. And we have um, cradle rounded corner radius here, which is pretty cool. So if we set that to 20 DP and take a look in the design tab, then you can see that these corners here are actually rounded. But now we are of course missing the bottom navigation view so that we have our menu items to choose from. And for that, we will go back to our code tab to the XML view. And what I will do is instead of closing the, the tag here for the bottom app bar, I will open it like this so we can put a view inside of that. And here we will put our bottom navigation view this time. So this view here with the view, uh, the width of match parent and the height as well. Also match parent. We will give it an ID of bottom navigation view. And we will set the menu of it to our bottom nav menu. And then we can simply close that tag off. Let's see how that looks in our design tab here. Okay, it, it looks fine, but not exactly as we want it. So on the one hand, you can see here is a little shadow. And there's also some space at the left hand. And these items here aren't really arranged in a way as we want it. And of course, it's also overlapping the circle here. So what I actually do here is to solve that problem. On the one hand, we will also add some margin to the right, because I don't think we can fix that margin here. So we will also attach that to the right. And we will make the background of this bottom navigation view transparent so that we see that um, circle again. So let's go back to our code tab. And in here to our bottom navigation view, we will attach some margin end here of exactly 16 dp. And we will also set the background of this bottom navigation view to Android color transparent. And if we now take a look back in the design tab, you can see that it is kind of the margin fits now, but it still doesn't look that good because there is still this shadow. And I personally actually don't know why this shadow occurs here because the background is transparent. But luckily, I know a way to fix that. And we cannot fix this in XML, we need to go to our main activity. And in here, we need to use our bottom navigation view. And write a dot after that, and use background, and just set it to null. So that will completely remove that shadow here. Of course, in XML, you will still see it. But once we start our app, this shadow will be gone here. And now the last problem we have is that these items aren't really aligned very well. And we can easily fix that by simply adding a placeholder icon and an invisible icon in the middle of that. So we simply go back to our bottom nav menu here, still open here. And after the, the second item here, we will launch, we will not launch, we will um, open a new tag for a placeholder item. So we set the ID to placeholder. And we let the title just be empty and we don't set any icon to that, of course. And then uh, this will actually, if you take a look in activity main, you can see now these are aligned much better, but we're still able to click on the middle icon. So if we would click exactly here, then this little bubble would appear if you click on an item. To disable that, we need to go to our main activity and also use our bottom navigation view dot menu to get a reference to its menu. And we want to get the item of that menu at the index of two. So starting from the left with index zero, which is our um, home icon, then we have index one for the search icon and index two for our placeholder icon. For that icon or menu item, actually, we want to set is enabled to false, and that will completely disable it.
so we cannot click on it and also this bubble won't appear. And that's it, let's try it out. Click on this play button here, take a look in the emulator and you can see here is our bottom navigation in combination with the bottom app bar. The bottom navigation is working perfectly fine. Of course, it doesn't do anything now. That is something you need to do, for example, to connect it with a navigation component library. And also the fab is, of course, not working here because we haven't set an on click listener to that. But that is something that you should be able to do um, or that you need to do, actually. This is just a tutorial how you can set up this combination of bottom app bar and bottom navigation view. If you like this video, then please hit the like button. And especially if you're not a subscriber of my channel, then quickly click on the subscribe button below and make sure to do that. You'll get regular Android content every second day. And yes, I wish all of you a very pleasant day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.